The South Island is the larger of the two major islands of New Zealand in surface area, the other being the smaller but more populous North Island. It is bordered to the north by Cook Strait, to the west by the Tasman Sea, and to the south and east by the Pacific Ocean. The South Island covers 150,437 square kilometers, 58,084 square miles, making it the world's 12th largest island. It has a temperate climate. It has a 32% larger landmass than the North Island, so is sometimes referred to as the mainland of New Zealand, especially by South Island residents, but only 23% of New Zealand's 4.9 million inhabitants live there. In the early stages of European Pakeha settlement of the country, the South Island had the majority of the European population and wealth due to the 1860s gold rushes. The North Island population overtook the South in the early 20th century, with 56% of the population living in the North in 1911, and the drift north of people and businesses continued throughout the century. Naming and usage In the 19th century, some maps named the South Island as Middle Island or New Munster, and the name South Island or New Leinster was used for today's Stewart Island, Rakura. In 1907 the Minister for Lands gave instructions to the Land and Survey Department that the name Middle Island was not to be used in future. South Island will be adhered to in all cases. Although the island had been known as the South Island for many years, in 2009 the New Zealand Geographic Board found that, along with the North Island, the South Island had no official name. After a public consultation, the board officially named the island South Island or Te Waipounamu in October 2013, said to mean the waters of greenstone. This name possibly evolved from Te Wahi Pounamu, the place of greenstone. The island is also known as Te Waka a Maui, which means Maui. S canoe. In some Maori legends, the South Island existed first as the boat of Maui, while the North Island was the fish that he caught. In prose, the two main islands of New Zealand are called the North Island and the South Island, with the definite article. It is also normal to use the preposition in rather than on, for example, Christ Church is in the South Island. My mother lives in the South Island. Maps, headings, tables and adjectival expressions use South Island without the. History Topic Prehistory Topic Charcoal drawings can be found on limestone rock shelters in the centre of the South Island, with over 500 sites stretching from Kaikoura to North Otago. The drawings are estimated to be between 500 and 800 years old, and portray animals, people and fantastic creatures, possibly stylized reptiles. Some of the birds pictured are long extinct, including moa and host's eagles. They were drawn by early Maori, but by the time Europeans arrived, local Maori did not know the origins of the drawings. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classical Maori period. Topic: Early inhabitants of the South Island were the Waitaha. They were largely absorbed via marriage and conquest by the Kati Mamoy in the 16th century. Kati Mamoy were in turn largely absorbed via marriage and conquest by the Kai Tahu who migrated south in the 17th century. While today there is no distinct Kati Mamoy organization, many Kai Tahu have Kati Mamoy links in their Fukapapa and especially in the far south of the island. Around the same time a group of Maori migrated to Rikou the Chatham Islands, where, in adapting to the local climate and the availability of resources, they eventually evolved into a separate people known as the Moriori with its own distinct language—closely related to the parent culture and language in mainland New Zealand. One notable feature of the Moriori culture, an emphasis on pacifism, proved disadvantageous when Maori warriors arrived in the 1830s aboard a chartered European ship. In the early 18th century, Kai Tahu, a Maori tribe who originated on the east coast of the North Island, began migrating to the northern part of the South Island. There they and Kati Mamoy fought Gai Tara and Rangitane in the Wairau Valley. Ngati Mamoy then ceded the east coast regions north of the Clarence River to Kai Tahu. Kai Tahu continued to push south, conquering Kaikoura. 
By the 1730s, Kai Tahu had settled in Canterbury, including Banks Peninsula. From there they spread further south and into the west coast. In 1827 to 1828, Nati Toa under the leadership of Te Rauparaha successfully attacked Kai Tahu at Kaikora. Nati Toa then visited Kaiapoi, ostensibly to trade. When they attacked their hosts, the well-prepared Kai Tahu killed all the leading Nati Toa chiefs except Te Rauparaha. Te Rauparaha returned to his Kapiti Island stronghold. In November 1830 Te Rauparaha persuaded Captain John Stewart of the Brig Elizabeth to carry him and his warriors in secret to Akaroa, where by subterfuge they captured the leading Kai Tahu chief, Te Maiharanui, and his wife and daughter. After destroying Te Maiharanui's village they took their captives to Kapiti and killed them. John Stewart, though arrested and sent to trial in Sydney as an accomplice to murder, nevertheless escaped conviction. In the summer of 1831 32, Te Rauparaha attacked the Kaiapoi Pa fortified village. Kaiapoi was engaged in a three month siege by Te Rauparaha, during which his men successfully sapped the Pa. They then attacked Kai Tahu on Banks Peninsula and took the Pa at Onawe. In 1832–33 Kai Tahu retaliated under the leadership of Tuhawaiki and others, attacking Nati Toa at Lake Grasmere. Kai Tahu prevailed, and killed many Nati Toa, although Te Rauparaha again escaped. Fighting continued for a year or so, with Kai Tahu maintaining the upper hand. Nati Toa never again made a major incursion into Kai Tahu territory. By 1839 Kai Tahu and Nati Toa established peace and Te Rauparaha released the Kai Tahu captives he held. Formal marriages between the leading families in the two tribes sealed the peace. European contact the first Europeans known to reach the South Island were the crew of Dutch explorer Abel Tasman who arrived in his ships Heemskerk and Zeheen. In December 1642, Tasman anchored at the northern end of the island in Golden Bay which he named Mordenar's Bay, Bay before sailing northward to Tonga following a clash with Maori. Tasman sketched sections of the two main islands' west coasts. Tasman called them Staten Land, after the States General of the Netherlands, and that name appeared on his first maps of the country. Dutch cartographers changed the name to Nova Zealandia in Latin, from New Zealand, after the Dutch province of Zealand. It was subsequently anglicised as New Zealand by British naval captain James Cook of Humbark Endeavour who visited the islands more than 100 years after Tasman during 1769 the first European settlement in the South Island was founded at Bluff in 1823 by James Spencer, a veteran of the Battle of Waterloo. In January 1827, the French explorer Jules Dumont d'Urville arrived in Tasman Bay on the Corvette Astrolabe. A number of landmarks around Tasman Bay were named by d'Urville and his crew, including Derville Island, French Pass, and Torrent Bay. European settlement When Britain annexed New Zealand in 1840, the South Island briefly became a part of the colony of New South Wales. This annexation was in response to France's attempts to colonise the South Island at Akaroa and the New Zealand Company attempts to establish a separate colony in Wellington, and so Lieutenant Governor William Hobson declared British sovereignty over all of New Zealand on 21 May 1840 the North Island by treaty and the South by discovery. On 17 June 1843, Maori natives and the British settlers clashed at Wairau in what became known as the Wairau Fray. Also known as the Wairau Massacre in most older texts, it was the first serious clash of arms between the two parties after the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi and the only one to take place in the South Island. Four Maori died and three were wounded in the incident, while among the Europeans the toll was 22 dead and five wounded. Twelve of the Europeans were shot dead or clubbed to death after surrendering to Maori who were pursuing them. The Otago Settlement, sponsored by the Free Church of Scotland, took concrete form in Otago in March 1848 with the arrival of the first two immigrant ships from Greenock on the Firth of Clyde the John Wycliffe and the Philip Line. Captain William Cargill, a veteran of the Peninsular War, served as the colony's first leader. Otago citizens subsequently elected him to the office of superintendent of the province of Otago. While the North Island was convulsed by the land wars of the 1860s and 1870s, the South Island, with its low Maori population, was generally peaceful. 
In 1861 gold was discovered at Gabriel's Gully in central Otago, sparking a gold rush. Dunedin became the wealthiest city in the country and many in the South Island resented financing the North Island's wars. In 1865 Parliament voted on a bill to make the South Island independent, it was defeated 17 to 31. In the 1860s, several thousand Chinese men, mostly from the Guangdong province, migrated to New Zealand to work on the South Island goldfields. Although the first Chinese migrants had been invited by the Otago provincial government they quickly became the target of hostility from white settlers and laws were enacted specifically to discourage them from coming to New Zealand. 2010–2011 earthquakes September 2010 An earthquake with magnitude 7.1 occurred in the South Island of New Zealand at Saturday 4:35 a.m. local time, the 4th of September 2010, 16:35 coordinated universal time, the 3rd of September 2010. The earthquake occurred at a depth of 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles, and there were no fatalities. The epicenter was located 40 kilometers 25 miles west of Christchurch, 10 kilometers 6.2 miles southeast of Darfield, 190 kilometers 120 miles south southeast of Westport, 295 kilometers 183 miles southwest of Wellington, and 320 kilometers 200 miles north northeast of Dunedin. Sewers were damaged, gas and water lines were broken, and power to up to 75 percent of the city was disrupted. Among the facilities impacted by lack of power was the Christchurch Hospital, which was forced to use emergency generators in the immediate aftermath of the quake. A local state of emergency was declared at 10:16 a.m. on the 4th of September for the city, and evacuations of parts were planned to begin later in the day. People inside the Christchurch city centre were evacuated, and the city's central business district remained closed until the 5th of September. A curfew from 7 p.m. on 4 September to 7 a.m. on 5 September was put in place. The New Zealand Army was also deployed to assist police and enforce the curfew. All schools were closed until 8 September so they could be checked. Christchurch International Airport was closed following the earthquake and flights in and out of it cancelled. It reopened at 1.30 p.m. following inspection of the main runway. The earthquake was reported to have caused widespread damage and power outages. 63 aftershocks were also reported in the first 48 hours with three registering 5.2 magnitude. Christchurch residents reported chimneys falling in through roofs, cracked ceilings and collapsed brick walls. The total insurance costs of this event were estimated to reach up to $11 billion according to the New Zealand Treasury. February 2011 A large aftershock of magnitude 6.3 occurred on of February 2011 at 12.51 pm. It was centred just to the north of Littleton, 10 km south-east of Christchurch, at a depth of 5 km. Although lower on the moment magnitude scale than the quake of September 2010, the intensity and violence of the ground shaking was measured to be 8 on the MMI and among the strongest ever recorded globally in an urban area due to the shallowness and proximity of the epicenter. Early assessments indicated that about a third of the buildings in the central business district would have to be demolished. In contrast to the September 2010 quake, the February 2011 earthquake struck on a busy weekday afternoon. This, along with the strength of the quakes, and the proximity to the city centre resulted in 181 deaths. This event promptly resulted in the declaration of New Zealand's first national state of emergency. Many buildings and landmarks were severely damaged, including the iconic Shag Rock and Christchurch Cathedral. International bodies quickly offered assistance. Contingents of Urban Search and Rescue soon arrived. Teams were provided by Australia, United States, Singapore, Britain, Taiwan, Japan and China. The Royal New Zealand Navy was involved immediately. The HMNZS Canterbury, which was docked at Littleton when the quake struck, was involved in providing local community assistance, in particular by providing hot meals. After inspection, the runway at Christchurch Airport was found to be in good order. 
Due to the demand of citizens wishing to leave the city, the national airline Air New Zealand, offered a $50 domestic standby airfare. The Air New Zealand CEO increased the domestic airline traffic from Christchurch to Wellington and Auckland. Thousands of people took up this offer to relocate temporarily in the wake of the event. On 1 March at 12.51, a week after the tragedy, New Zealand observed a two-minute silence. June 2011 On 13 June 2011 at about 1 p.m. New Zealand time, Christchurch was again rocked by a magnitude 5.7 quake, followed by a magnitude 6.3 quake initially thought to be 6 at 2.20 p.m., centred in a similar location to that of the February quake with a depth of 6.0 km. Dozens of aftershocks occurred over the following days, including several over magnitude 4. Phone lines and power were lost in some suburbs, and liquefaction surfaced mainly in the eastern areas of the city which were worst affected following the aftershocks. Many residents in and around the hillside suburb of Sumner self evacuated. Further damage was reported to buildings inside the cordoned central business district, with an estimate of 75 additional buildings needing demolition. Among the buildings further damaged was the Christchurch Cathedral, which lost its iconic rose window, a factor reducing the likelihood of the cathedral being restored. There was only one death recorded following the quake, however, there were many injuries. <laughs> <laughs> Government and politics the South Island has no separately represented country subdivision, but is guaranteed 16 of the electorates in the New Zealand House of Representatives. A two-tier structure constituted under the Local Government Act 2002 gives the South Island and its adjacent islands seven regional councils for the administration of regional environmental and transport matters and 25 territorial authorities that administer roads, sewerage, building consents, and other local matters. Four of the territorial councils one city and three districts also perform the functions of a regional council and are known as unitary authorities. When New Zealand was separated from the colony of New South Wales in 1841 and established as a crown colony in its own right, the royal charter affecting this provided that the principal islands, heretofore known as, or commonly called, the Northern Island, the Middle Island, and Stewart's Island, shall henceforward be designated and known respectively as New Ulster, New Munster, and New Leinster. These divisions were at first of geographical significance only, not used as a basis for the government of the colony, which was centralised in Auckland. New Munster consisted of the South Island and the southern portion of the North Island, up to the mouth of the Padia River. The name New Munster was given by the Governor of New Zealand, Captain William Hobson, in honour of Munster, the Irish province in which he was born. The situation was altered in 1846 when the New Zealand Constitution Act 1846, divided the colony into two provinces, New Ulster Province the North Island, and New Munster Province the South Island and Stewart Island. Each province had a governor and legislative and executive council, in addition to the governor-in-chief and legislative and executive council for the whole colony. However, the 1846 Constitution Act was later suspended, and only the provincial government provisions were implemented. Early in 1848 Edward John Eyre was appointed lieutenant governor of New Munster. In 1851 the provincial legislative councils were permitted to be partially elective. The Provincial Council of New Munster had only one legislative session, in 1849, before it succumbed to the virulent attacks of settlers from Wellington. Governor Sir George Grey, sensible to the pressures, inspired an ordinance of the General Legislative Council under which new legislative councils would be established in each province with two-thirds of their members elected on a generous franchise. Grey implemented the ordinance with such deliberation that neither council met before advice was received that the United Kingdom Parliament had passed the New Zealand Constitution Act 1852. This act dissolved these provinces in 1853, after only seven years' existence, and New Munster was divided into the provinces of Canterbury, Nelson, and Otago. Each province had its own legislature known as a provincial council that elected its own speaker and superintendent. Secession movements have surfaced several times in the South Island. A Premier of New Zealand, Sir Julius Vogel, was amongst the first people to make this call, which was voted on by the New Zealand Parliament as early as 1865. 
The desire for the South Island to form a separate colony was one of the main factors in moving the capital of New Zealand from Auckland to Wellington that year. Several South Island nationalist groups have emerged over recent years including the South Island Party with a pro-South agenda, fielded candidates in the 1999 general election. Today, several internet-based groups advocate their support for greater self-determination. On the 13th of October 2010, South Island mayors led by Bob Parker of Christchurch displayed united support for a Southern Mayoral Council. Supported by Waitaki Mayor Alex Hamilton and Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadbolt, Bob Parker said that increased cooperation and the forming of a new South Island-wide mayoral forum were essential to representing the island's interests in Wellington and countering the new Auckland Council. In February 2012, the South Island Strategic Alliance (SISA), involving nearly all the councils of the South Island, was formed. This group is made up of elected representatives and senior management from 12 councils and the Department of Internal Affairs. It will examine potential projects where there are real and achievable benefits, for example in roads, information technology and library services and then allocate the project to a group of willing council CEOs for progression. <laughs> <laughs> Administrative divisions there are 23 territorial authorities within the South Island, four city councils and 19 district councils. Three territorial authorities Nelson city Council, and the Tasman and Marlborough district councils also perform the functions of a regional council and thus are known as unitary authorities. Political parties this is a list of political parties, past and present, who have their headquarters in the South Island. Aotearoa Legalise Cannabis Party Imperial British Conservative Party National Democrats Party New Munster Party New Zealand Democratic Party New Zealand Progressive Party South Island Party Law enforcement Topic. Topic. Police. Topic. The New Zealand Police is the primary law enforcement agency of New Zealand, including the South Island. Three decentralised police districts cover the entire South Island, with each being commanded by a superintendent and having a central station from which subsidiary and suburban stations are managed. The Christchurch Police Communications Centre handles all emergency and general calls within the South Island. The Tasman Police District covers 70,000 km of territory, encompassing the northern and most of the western portion of the South Island. The west coast alone spans the distance between Wellington and Auckland. There are 22 police stations in the Tasman District, with six being sole charge, or one person, stations. The Tasman Police District has a total of 302 sworn police officers and 57 civilian or nonsworn staff. Organizationally, the district has its headquarters in Nelson and has three distinct areas each headed by an inspector as its commander. The areas are Nelson Bays, West Coast and Marlborough. The Canterbury Police District is based in Christchurch the largest city in the South Island and covers an area extending from the Conway River, just south of Kaikoura, to the Waitaki River, south of Timaru. The Southern Police District with its headquarters in Dunedin spans from Amaru in the north through to Stewart Island in the far south covers the largest geographical area of any of the twelve police districts in New Zealand. The Southern District has three distinct areas headed by inspectors, Otago Rural, Southland and Dunedin. Topic. Correctional facilities Topic. Correctional facilities in the South Island are operated by the Department of Corrections as part of the South Island Prison Region. Christchurch Prison, also known as Paparua, is located in Templeton a satellite town of Christchurch. It accommodates up to 780 minimum, medium and high security male prisoners. It was built in 1925, and also includes a youth unit, a self-care unit and the Paparua Remand Center PRC, built in 1999 to replace the old Addington Prison. Christchurch Women's Prison, also located in Templeton, is a facility for women of all security classifications. It has the only maximum, medium security accommodation for women prisoners in New Zealand. 
It can accommodate up to 98 prisoners. Rolleston Prison is located in Rolleston, another satellite town of Christchurch. It accommodates around 320 male prisoners of minimum to low-medium security classifications and includes Kia Marama a 60-bed unit that provides an intensive nine-month treatment program for male child sex offenders. Invercargill Prison, in Invercargill, accommodates up to 172 minimum to low-medium security prisoners. Otago Corrections Facility is located near Milton and houses up to 335 minimum to high-medium security male prisoners. Customs Service The New Zealand Customs Service whose role is to provide border control and protect the community from potential risks arising from international trade and travel, as well as collecting duties and taxes on imports to the country has offices at Christchurch International Airport, Dunedin, Invercargill, Littleton and Nelson. People. Topic. Topic. Population. Topic. Compared to the more populated and multi-ethnic North Island, the South Island has a smaller, more homogeneous resident population of 1,135,500. June 2018. According to the Statistics New Zealand Subnational Population Projections, 2006 to 2031, the South Island. S population will increase by an average of 0.6% a year to 1,047,100 in 2011, 1,080,900 1 in 2016, 1,107,900 1 in 2021, 1,130,900 1 in 2026, and 1,149,400 in 2031. At the 2013 Census of Population and Dwellings, 88.2% of South Islanders identified as of European ethnicity, 8.7% as Maori, 5.6% as Asian, 2.2% as Pacific peoples, 0.8% as Middle Eastern, Latin American, African, and 2.1% as another ethnicity mainly. New Zealander. 18% of the South Island. S population was born overseas, compared to 27.5% in the North Island. The British Isles is the largest region of origin, accounting for 37.9% of the overseas born population in the South Island. Around 48.6% of South Islanders affiliate with Christianity and 3.1% affiliate with non Christian religions, while 45.8% are irreligious. Anglicanism is the largest Christian denomination in the South Island with 12.7% affiliating, closely followed by Catholicism at 12.1% and Presbyterianism at 11.7%. Urbanization Economy The South Island economy is strongly focused on tourism and primary industries like agriculture. The other main industry groups are manufacturing, mining, construction, energy supply, education, health and community services. Energy the South Island is a major centre for electricity generation, especially in the southern half of the island and especially from hydroelectricity. In 2010, the island generated 18,010 GWh of electricity, 41.5% of New Zealand's total electricity generation. Nearly all of the island. S electricity is generated by hydroelectricity, with most of the remainder coming from wind generation. The three large hydro schemes in the South Island, Waitaki, Clutha, and Manapouri, together produce nearly 92% of the island's electricity. The Waitaki River is the largest at 1,738 MW of installed capacity. The Waitaki River is the largest hydroelectric scheme, consisting of nine powerhouses commissioned between 1936 and 1985, and generating about 7,600 gigawatt-hours annually, around 18% of New Zealand. 
S electricity generation and more than 30% of all its hydroelectricity. The Clutha River has two major stations generating electricity, Clyde Dam 432 megawatts, commissioned 1992 and Roxburg Dam 360 megawatts, commissioned 1962. Manapouri Power Station is an isolated station located in Southland, generating 730 megawatts of electricity and producing 4,800 gigawatt hours annually, the largest single hydroelectric power station in the country. While most of the electricity generated in the South Island is transported via the 220 kV grid plus 110 kV and 66 kV connectors to major demand centers, including Christchurch, Dunedin, and Ty Point Aluminium Smelter, around one-sixth of it is exported to the North Island to meet its large and increasing power demands via the HVDC Inter-Island Link. The 611 km HVDC Inter Island was commissioned in 1965, linking Benmore Dam on the Waitaki River in southern Canterbury, with Hayward's substation in Lower Hutt in the North Island, with cables crossing Cook Strait between Fighting Bay and Oteranga Bay. While the majority of the time the South Island exports electricity to the North Island via the link, it is also used to import thermally generated North Island electricity in years of low hydro levels. Offshore oil and gas is likely to become an increasing important part of the South Island economy into the future. Origin Energy has formed a joint venture with Anadarko Petroleum, the second largest independent U.S. natural gas producer to begin drilling for oil in the Canterbury Basin off the coast of Dunedin. The 390 square kilometers Carrick Caravel prospect has the potential to deliver more than the equivalent of 500 million barrels, 79 million cubic meters of oil and gas. Market analyst, Greg Easton from Craig's Investment Partners commented that such a substantial find it could well turn Dunedin from the Edinburgh of the South to the Aberdeen of the South. The Great South Basin off the coast of Otago and Southland at over 500,000 square kilometres covering an area 1.5 times New Zealand's land mass is one of New Zealand's largest undeveloped offshore petroleum basins with prospects for both oil and gas. In July 2007 the New Zealand government awarded oil and gas exploration permits for four areas of the Great South Basin, situated in the volatile waters off the southern coast of New Zealand. The three successful permit holders are a consortium led by ExxonMobil New Zealand Exploration Limited United States which includes local company Todd Exploration Limited New Zealand a consortium led by OMV New Zealand Limited Austria which includes PTTEP Offshore Investment Company Limited Thailand Mitsui Exploration and Production Australia Thai Limited Japan and Greymouth Petroleum Limited New Zealand The sub-national GDP of the South Island was estimated at 27.8 billion dollars in 2003 21% of New Zealand's national GDP Topic Stock exchanges Topic. Due to the gold rushes of the 1860s, the South Island had regional stock exchanges in Christchurch, Dunedin and Invercargill, all of which were affiliated in the Stock Exchange Association of New Zealand. However, in 1974 these regional exchanges were amalgamated to form one national stock exchange, the New Zealand Stock Exchange Separate trading floors operated in both Christchurch and Dunedin until the late 1980s. On 30 May 2003, New Zealand Stock Exchange Limited formally changed its name to New Zealand Exchange Limited, trading as NZX. Today, the Deloitte South Island Index is compiled quarterly from publicly available information provided by NZX, Unlisted and Bloomberg. It is a summary of the movements in market capitalization of each South Island based listed company. A company is included in the index where either its registered office and or a substantial portion of its operations are focused on the South Island. Trade unions There are several South Island-based trade union organisations. They are, Furniture, Manufacturing and Associated Workers Union New Zealand Building Trades Union New Zealand Meat and Related Trades Workers Union Southern Amalgamated Workers Union Topic Tourism Topic Tourism is a huge earner for the South Island. Popular tourist activities include sightseeing, adventure tourism, such as glacier climbing and bungee jumping, tramping, hiking, kayaking, and camping. 
Numerous walking and hiking paths such as the Milford Track, have huge international recognition. An increase in direct international flights to Christchurch, Dunedin and Queenstown has boosted the number of overseas tourists. Fiordland National Park, Abel Tasman National Park, Westland National Park, Aoraki, Mount Cook National Park, Queenstown, Kaikoura and the Marlborough Sounds are regarded as the main tourism destinations in the South Island and amongst the top ten destinations in New Zealand. Topic ski areas and resorts Topic This is a list of ski areas and resorts in the South Island. Topic transport topic topic Road transport topic The South Island has a state highway network of 4,921 km. Topic rail transport topic The South Island's railway network has two main lines, two secondary lines, and a few branch lines. The main north line from Picton to Christchurch and the main south line from Littleton to Invercargill via Dunedin together comprise the South Island Main Trunk Railway. The secondary Midland Line branches from the main south line in Rolleston and passes through the Southern Alps via the Otira Tunnel to the west coast and its terminus in Greymouth. In Stillwater, it meets the other secondary route, the Stillwater-Westport Line, which now includes the Nakawa branch. A number of other secondary routes are now closed, including the Otago Central Railway, the isolated Nelson section, and the interdependent Waimea Plains Railway and Kingston branch. An expansive network of branch lines once existed, especially in Canterbury, Otago, and Southland, but these are now almost completely closed. The branch lines that remain in operation serve ports Bluff Branch and Port Chalmers Branch, Coal Mines Ojai Branch and Rapahoe Branch, and a dairy factory Hokitika Branch. The first 64 km of the Otago Central Railway remain in operation for tourist trains run by Dunedin Railways formerly Tayeri Gorge Railway. The most significant freight is coal from West Coast Mines to the port of Littleton for export. Passenger services were once extensive. Commuter trains operated multiple routes around Christchurch and Dunedin, plus a service between Invercargill and Bluff. Due to substantial losses, these were cancelled between the late 1960s and early 1980s. The final services to operate ran between Dunedin's city centre and the suburb of Mosgiel, and they ceased in 1982. Regional passenger trains were once extensive, but are now limited to the transcoastal from Christchurch to Picton and the transalpine from Christchurch to Greymouth. The southerner between Christchurch and Invercargill, once the flagship of the network, was cancelled on 10 February 2002. Subsequently, the architecturally significant Dunedin Railway Station has been used solely by the TGR's tourist trains, the Tayeri Gorge Limited along the Otago Central Railway and the Seasider to Palmerston. Rural passenger services on branch lines were provided by mixed trains and Vulcan, 88-seater railcars but the mixeds had largely ceased to exist by the 1950s and the railcars were withdrawn in the mid-1970s. The South Island saw the final use of steam locomotives in New Zealand. Locomotives belonging to classes long withdrawn elsewhere continued to operate on West Coast branches until the very late 1960s, when they were displaced by DJ-class diesels. In comparison to most countries, where steam locomotives were last used on insubstantial rural and industrial operations, the very last services run by steam locomotives were the Premier Expresses between Christchurch and Invercargill, the South Island Limited until 1970 and the Friday and Sunday night services until 1971. This was due to the carriages being steam heated. The final steam hauled service in New Zealand, headed by a member of the Yaw class, ran on 26 October 1971. Topic. Water transport topic. The South Island is separated from the North Island by Cook Strait, which is 24 km 15 miles wide at its narrowest point, and requires a 70 km 43 miles ferry trip to cross. Dunedin was the headquarters of the Union Steam Ship Company, once the largest shipping company in the Southern Hemisphere. Ports and harbors Topic. Container ports, Littleton Christchurch, Port Chalmers Dunedin. Other ports, Nelson, Picton, Westport, Greymouth, Timaru, Bluff. Harbors, Akaroa Harbor, Otago Harbor, Halfmoon Bay Stewart Island, Rikura, Milford Sound. Freshwater, Queenstown and Kingston Lake Wakatipu, Te Ana and Manapouri Lake Manapouri. 
Air transport Topic Topic Airports Topic Topic Geography Topic the South Island, with an area of 150,437 square kilometers (58,084 square miles), is the largest land mass of New Zealand. It contains about one quarter of the New Zealand population and is the world's twelfth largest island. It is divided along its length by the Southern Alps, the highest peak of which is Aoraki, Mount Cook at 3,724 metres 12,218 feet, making it ninth highest island, with the High Kaikoura Ranges to the northeast. There are 18 peaks of more than 3,000 metres 9, feet in the South Island. The east side of the island is home to the Canterbury Plains while the west coast is famous for its rough coastlines such as Fiordland, very high proportion of native bush, and Fox and Franz Josef glaciers. The dramatic landscape of the South Island has made it a popular location for the production of several films, including The Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe. It lies at similar latitudes to Tasmania an island south of the Australian mainland, and parts of Patagonia in South America. Geology On 4 September 2010, the South Island was struck by a 7.1 magnitude earthquake, which caused extensive damage, several power outages, and many reports of aftershocks. Five and a half months later, the 22nd of February Christchurch earthquake of 6.3 magnitude caused far more additional damage in Christchurch, resulting in 181 deaths. This quake struck at about lunchtime and was centered closer at Littleton, and shallower than the prior quake, consequently causing extensive damage. <laughs> Climate the climate in the South Island is mostly temperate. The mean temperature for the South Island is 8 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit. January and February are the warmest months while July is the coldest. Historical maxima and minima are 42.4 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit in Rangiora, Canterbury and 21.6 degrees Celsius .9 degrees Fahrenheit in Ophir, Otago. Conditions vary sharply across the regions from extremely wet on the west coast to semi-arid in the Mackenzie Basin of inland Canterbury. Most areas have between 600 and 1,600 mm of rainfall, with the most rain along the west coast and the least rain on the east coast, predominantly on the Canterbury Plains. Christchurch is the driest city, receiving about 640 mm of rain per year, while Invercargill is the wettest, receiving about 1,150 mm. The southern and southwestern parts of South Island have a cooler and cloudier climate, with around 1,400 to 1,600 hours of sunshine annually. The northern and northeastern parts of the South Island are the sunniest areas and receive about 2,400 to 2,500 hours. Topic: <laughs> Natural geographic features. Topic. Fjords The South Island has 15 named maritime fjords which are all located in the southwest of the island in a mountainous area known as Fjordland. The spelling, fjord, is used in New Zealand rather than fjord, although all the maritime fjords use the word sound in their name instead. A number of lakes in the Fjordland and Otago regions also fill glacial valleys. Lake Te Ana has three western arms which are fjords and are named so. Lake Makuro to the north of Milford Sound is a fjord with a silted up mouth. Lake Wakatipu fills a large glacial valley, as do lakes Hakapoa, Pateriteri, Manawai and Haroko in the far south of Fjordland. Lake Manapouri has fjords as its west, north and south arms. The Marlborough Sounds, a series of deep indentations in the coastline at the northern tip of the South Island, are in fact rias, drowned river valleys. Glaciers Most of New Zealand's glaciers are in the South Island. 
They are generally found in the Southern Alps near the Main Divide. An inventory of South Island glaciers during the 1980s indicated there were about 3,155 glaciers with an area of at least one hectare acres. About a sixth of these glaciers covered more than 10 hectares. These include the Fox and Franz Josef glaciers on the west coast, and the Tasman, Hooker, Mueller and Murchison glaciers in the east. <laughs> Lakes there are some 3,820 lakes in New Zealand with a surface area larger than one hectare. Much of the higher country in the South Island was covered by ice during the glacial periods of the last two million years. Advancing glaciers eroded large steep-sided valleys, and often carried piles of moraine rocks and soil that acted as natural dams. When the glaciers retreated, they left basins that are now filled by lakes. The level of most glacial lakes in the upper parts of the Waitaki and Klutha rivers are controlled for electricity generation. Hydroelectric reservoirs are common in South Canterbury and Central Otago, the largest of which is Lake Benmore, on the Waitaki River. The South Island has eight of New Zealand's ten biggest lakes. They were formed by glaciers and include Lake Wakatipu, Lake Takapo and Lake Manapouri. The deepest 462 meters is Lake Haroko, in western Southland. It is the 16th deepest lake in the world. Millions of years ago, central Otago had a huge lake, Lake Manuharikia. It was slowly filled in with mud, and fossils of fish and crocodiles have been found there. Volcanoes <inaudible> 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 There are four extinct volcanoes in the South Island, all located on the east coast. Banks Peninsula forms the most prominent of these volcanic features. Geologically, the peninsula comprises the eroded remnants of two large shield volcanoes Littleton formed first, then Akaroa. These formed due to intraplate volcanism between about 11 and 8 million years ago Miocene on a continental crust. The peninsula formed as offshore islands, with the volcanoes reaching to about 1,500 metres above sea level. Two dominant craters formed Littleton and Akaroa harbours. The Canterbury Plains formed from the erosion of the Southern Alps an extensive and high mountain range caused by the meeting of the Indo-Australian and Pacific tectonic plates and from the alluvial fans created by large braided rivers. These plains reach their widest point where they meet the hilly sub-region of Banks Peninsula. A layer of loess, a rather unstable fine silt deposited by the fern winds which bluster across the plains, covers the northern and western flanks of the peninsula. The portion of crater rim lying between Littleton Harbour and Christchurch City forms the Port Hills. The Otago Harbour was formed from the drowned remnants of a giant shield volcano, centered close to what is now the town of Port Chalmers. The remains of this violent origin can be seen in the basalt of the surrounding hills. The last eruptive phase ended some 10 million years ago, leaving the prominent peak of Mount Cargill. Timaru was constructed on rolling hills created from the lava flows of the extinct Mount Horrible, which last erupted many thousands of years ago. Te Wahapounamu World Heritage Site Te Wahapounamu Maori for the place of greenstone is a World Heritage Site in the southwest corner of the South Island, inscribed on the World Heritage List in 1990 it covers 26,000 square kilometres and incorporates the Aoraki, Mount Cook, the Fiordland, the Mount Aspiring and the Westland National Parks. It is thought to contain some of the best modern representations of the original flora and fauna present in Gondwanaland. One of the reasons for listing as a World Heritage Site. Protected areas Forest parks There are six forest parks in the South Island which are on public land administered by the Department of Conservation. Catlins Forest Park Situated in the Southland region. Craigieburn Forest Park Situated in the Canterbury region, its boundaries lie in part alongside State Highway 73 and is adjacent to the eastern flanks of the Southern Alps. The Broken River Ski Area and the Craigieburn Valley Ski Area lie within its borders. 
The New Zealand Forest Service had used the area as an experimental forestry area and there is now an environmental issue with the spread of wilding conifers. Hanmer Forest Park Situated in the Canterbury region. Lake Sumner Forest Park Situated in the Canterbury region. Mount Richmond Forest Park Situated in the Marlborough region. Victoria Forest Park Situated in the West Coast region. Topic: National Parks. Topic: The South Island has 10 national parks established under the National Parks Act 1980 and which are administered by the Department of Conservation. From north to south, the national parks are Kahurangi National Park, 4520 square kilometers, established 1996, situated in the northwest of the South Island. Kahurangi comprises spectacular and remote country and includes the Hefe Track. It has ancient landforms and unique flora and fauna. It is New Zealand's second largest national park. Abel Tasman National Park, 225 square kilometers, established 1942, has numerous tidal inlets and beaches of golden sand along the shores of Tasman Bay. It is New Zealand's smallest national park. Nelson Lakes National Park, 1,018 square kilometers, established 1956, a rugged mountainous area in Nelson region. It extends southwards from the forested shores of Lake Rotoiti and Rotoroa to the Lewis Pass National Reserve. Paparoa National Park 306 square kilometers established 1987 on the west coast of the South Island between Westport and Greymouth it includes the celebrated pancake rocks at Punakaiki Arthur's Pass National Park 1144 square kilometers established 1929 a rugged and mountainous area straddling the main divide of the Southern Alps Westland Tai Putini National Park 1175 square kilometers established 1960 extends from the highest peaks of the southern alps to a wild remote coastline included in the park are glaciers scenic lakes and dense rainforest plus remains of old gold mining towns along the coast aoraki mount cook national park 707 square kilometers established 1953 an alpine park containing New Zealand's highest mountain, Aoraki, Mount Cook, 3,754 meters, and its longest glacier, Tasman Glacier, 29 kilometers. A focus for mountaineering, ski touring, and scenic flights, the park is an area of outstanding natural beauty. Together, the Mount Cook and Westland National Parks have been declared a World Heritage Site. Mount Aspiring National Park. 3,555 square kilometers, established 1964, a complex of impressively glaciated mountain scenery centered on Mount Aspiring, Tatisha, 3,036 meters, New Zealand's highest peak outside of the main divide. Fiordland National Park, 12,519 square kilometers, established 1952, the largest national park in New Zealand and one of the largest in the world. The grandeur of its scenery, with its deep fjords, its lakes of glacial origin, its mountains and waterfalls, has earned it international recognition as a World Heritage Area. Rakura National Park 1,500 square kilometers, established 2002 on Stewart Island, Rakura, other native reserves and parks Hakater Conservation Park Natural history Topic. Topic. Birds. Topic. There are several bird species which are endemic to the South Island. They include the kea, great spotted kiwi, Ocarito brown kiwi, South Island kokako, South Island pied oystercatcher, Malherbs parakeet, king shag, takahe, black-fronted tern, South Island robin, rock wren, ryebill, and yellowhead. Many South Island bird species are now extinct, mainly due to hunting by humans and predation by cats and rats introduced by humans. Extinct species include the South Island goose, South Island giant moa, harpajornis and South Island piopio. Education <inaudible> 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 
The South Island has several tertiary level institutions. Topic: Healthcare. Topic: Healthcare in the South Island is provided by five district health boards (DHBs). Organized around geographical areas of varying population sizes, they are not coterminous with the local government regions. Emergency medical services There are several air ambulance and rescue helicopter services operating throughout the South Island. The Lake District's Air Rescue Trust operates two AS350BA squirrels and an AS355 squirrel from Queenstown Airport. The New Zealand Flying Doctor Service operates a Cessna 421 Golden Eagle and a Cessna Conquest C441 from Christchurch International Airport. The Otago Rescue Helicopter Trust operates a MBB, Kawasaki BK-117 from Teori Aerodrome near Mosgiel. The Solid Energy Rescue Helicopter Trust operates an AS350BA squirrel from Greymouth. The Summit Rescue Helicopter Trust operates an AS350BA squirrel from Nelson Airport. The Westpac Rescue Helicopter Trust operates a MBB, Kawasaki BK-117 and an AS350BA squirrel from Christchurch International Airport. Culture. Topic. Topic. Art. Topic. The South Island has contributed to the arts in New Zealand and internationally through highly regarded artists such as Nigel Brown, Francis Hodgkins, Colin McCann, Shona McFarlane, Peter McIntyre, Graham Sidney, and Jeff Williams. The University of Canterbury School of Fine Arts was founded in 1950. South Island Art Galleries include Centre of Contemporary Art Christchurch Arts Centre Dunedin Public Art Gallery Language Parts of the South Island principally Southland and the very southernmost areas of Otago near the border with Southland are famous for its people speaking what is often referred to as the Southland Burr a semi-rhotic, Scottish-influenced dialect of the English language. Media Newspapers <inaudible> 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 The South Island has ten daily newspapers and a large number of weekly community newspapers. Major daily newspapers include the Ashburton Guardian, Greymouth Star, the Marlborough Express, the Nelson Mail, Amaru Mail, Otago Daily Times, The Press, Southland Times, the Timaru Herald, and West Coast Times. The Press and Otago Daily Times, serving mainly Christchurch and Dunedin respectively, are the South Island's major newspapers. Television. <laughs> The South Island has seven regional stations either non-commercial public service or privately owned that broadcast only in one region or city, 45 South TV, Channel 9, Canterbury Television, Q, Mainland Television, Shine TV, and Visitor TV. These stations mainly broadcast free-to-air on UHF frequencies, however some are carried on subscription TV. Content ranges from local news, access broadcasts, satellite sourced news, tourist information and Christian programming to music videos. Topic: Radio stations. Topic: A large number of radio stations serve communities throughout the South Island. These include independent stations, but many are owned by organizations such as Radio New Zealand, New Zealand Media and Entertainment, and MediaWorks New Zealand. Topic: Museums. Topic: Bluff Maritime Museum, Cadbury World, Canterbury Museum, Ferrymead Heritage Park. Nelson Provincial Museum Alveston House Otago Museum Otago Settlers Museum, Toitu 
Royal New Zealand Air Force Museum Southland Museum and Art Gallery World of Wearable Art Yaldhurst Museum Religion Anglicanism is strongest in Canterbury the city of Christchurch having been founded as an Anglican settlement. Catholicism is still has a noticeably strong presence on the West Coast, and in Kaikoura. The territorial authorities with the highest proportion of Catholics are Kaikoura where they are 18.4% of the total population, Westland 18.3%, and Grey 17.8%. Presbyterianism is strong in the Lower South Island—the city of Dunedin was founded as a Presbyterian settlement, and many of the early settlers in the region were Scottish Presbyterians. The territorial authorities with the highest proportion of Presbyterians are Gore where they are 30.9% of the total population, Clutha District and Southland the first Muslims in New Zealand were Chinese gold diggers working in the Dunstan gold fields of Otago in the 1860s. Dunedin's Al Huda Mosque is the world's southernmost, and the farthest from Mecca. Sport A number of professional sports teams are based in the South Island with the major spectator sports of rugby union and cricket particularly well represented. The Crusaders and Highlanders represent the Upper and Lower South Island respectively in rugby union's Super Rugby competition, and Canterbury, Otago, Southland Stags, Tasman Makos all participate in provincial rugby's ITM Cup. At cricket, the South Island is represented by the Canterbury Wizards, Central Stags, and Otago Volts in the Plunkett Shield, One Day Domestic Series, and the Super Smash. As well as rugby union and cricket, the South Island also boasts representative teams in the domestic basketball, soccer, ice hockey, netball, and rugby league. The North vs South match, sometimes known as the Inter-Island match was a long-standing rugby union fixture in New Zealand. The first game was played in 1897 and the last match was played in 1995. Christchurch also hosted the 1974 Commonwealth Games. An unidentified group is promoting a bid for the South Island to host the 2022 Winter Olympics. See also Cities and towns of the South Island by population List of twin towns and sister cities in the South Island Military of the South Island New Munster Norwest Arch South Island nationalism References Further reading Atkinson, Brett, et al. New Zealand's South Island 2010 excerpt and text search Bull, Mary P. 2004. New Zealand Tales and Tours, South Island Adventures. Trafford Publishing. External links South Island South Island Road Map